So another thing you will commonly find are matrices in descriptive form. What I mean by that is something like a matrix. Ij is defined as 1 if 1 is unequal to j and i squared if i is equal to j. And what you would do in this scenario is the i gives the the row you need to you need to be in. So this would be the value 1 1, this would be the value 2 1, this would be the value 1 2, and this one would be the value 2 2. So as we can see if i is equal to j, i which is this index which grows downwards and j is the index that grows as we go to the right we can see i squared would be in this example one and we can erase this help this helper index right here so one and if it's unequal which is the case right here it's also one so we can just fill in the matrix like that and two squared is four and here it's unequal so it's one and that's the matrix now let's take a look how we can do it in dropma and I've prepared a little header that we can include, which has all the common things we need. What we could do, because we've calculated it already, is we could define a matrix mat2, let's do it as matrix A, equals 2. And now we can define the matrix column by column. So in drop math we order the matrix like this as a vector and this as a vector and this would be our i and this would be our j vector this will make sense later on just take it as a given right now so this is our first column and then our second column is this one and we would have defined our matrix like that we can even get rid of the equal sign and that would be already it but for more complex matrices we want to have a way to transform this way of writing the matrix into a matrix so let's take a look at that real quick after we've done this let's define another matrix and this matrix we want to build manually or what what means manually we want to write a little program that builds it for us first we need to loop over the um, i which is the the row index and then we need to loop over the j which is the column index now we can what this description means is we have one if i unequals j and we have one and we have i squared if i is equal to j so what we can write is and now one thing in drop math that we you will see later on hopefully that it makes sense is we have ordered it in columns not in rows so our first index is not the row index but it is the column index and we want to assign this to is i equal to j if yes then we would be in this case which means we would uh, assign i squared which would be i times i else uh, i would be unequal to j which would be in this case and in this case we would just assign one to it and now we can also output our second matrix oh, wait a minute we can actually do it like this make our index start at one and our index should now be smaller than three because 2 is still valid now and now we can have a minus 1 also here now it should be correct again and as we can see we've produced the same matrix right here I guess let's take a look at another quick example what we also might have is only two dimensions but we would for example have three different cases so let's take a look at how we would do that and let's say if i is equal to j then our second one would be if the absolute value of i minus j equals to one and this would be our else case so let's take a look how we would do that j 
M would have defined it as that. And M by J would be then equal to. Um, if I is equal to J, is exactly um, the case uh, when we are on the diag diagonal. So let's say we are in three dimensions this time because that way we would see it more easily. And then we can see that whenever we move one off the, the diagonal, this is always the case when we moved off one by the, 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 the diagonal because the index j grows in this way and index i grows in this direction, we would see that yeah, the difference is always one if we're one off the diagonal. So we can fill these fields in also with our second case. And then the last thing that's missing is the else. And so what we have here is three and that one looks wrong because we don't have that many dimensions. And that would be our resulting matrix. Let's take a look at how we would code something like this. So just to um, yeah, just to compare these two matrices again, we can define them like we did before, like this. Then our second vector would be two, one, and a two. And then we would also have a third vector. And that third vector would be three, two, and one, like that. And now let's see how we would calculate it, because this would get a little bit um, convoluted if we do it with the ternary operator. So let's get rid of this line completely. So we would just do it with a little switch thingy. And what we would have to do is to define our case, oh, not case, let's, let's just, just call it C and initialize it to apps of i minus j, just like that. And in our switch, we would switch over C and our case zero would be the one value. And the result would be a floating value and well, it's always a good idea to initialize it, even if we know that we want to assign it. And then what we what, what do here is to assign the result to one. And in case it would be one, we would assign the result to two. And our default Be. Here we uh, our default would be three, so that's indented a little bit to make it look more pretty. And then after that, our B J I. Remember, um, the order is here reversed again because the J is our column index and the i is our um, row index. Now assign it to um, our result. And then we can output it again. But just to make it more clear this time, let's do the same matrix. Let's do new line that and if it compiles then we should have same matrix and it didn't work oh of course of course of course we have a three by three matrix so this should be like this this happens when you don't pay attention and if you run it now we can see that we have the same matrix finally.